So, Paul, I did, I did have a couple more questions uh, about the new album. You've got four producers in the mix. What does it take for you to gel with someone in the studio? What do you look for? Um, just really to be relaxed, have a good time, and for them to be good, mm -hmm. um, which, which was what happened. Okay. I was really intending to choose between the four producers, but each one of them brought something different to the mix, as you say. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I ended up staying with all four. And you have produced yourself, of course. I mean, McCartney 2, one of my favourite records of yours, and that was self-produced. Um, would you ever work like that again, do you think, in future? Um, yeah, every so often, about every 10 years, I get the urge to do that. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, even when I'm working with other producers, I'm, you know, co-producing. Mm. So it's a team thing. But actually, me on my own, um, just doing something, uh, yeah, when the urge takes me, maybe. Okay. And what about, you know, the fact that, that you've got someone in the studio with you, you've chosen them to produce a track with you. They have to be able to say no to you a little bit. Is it important that you've got someone who can, who can kind of give as good as they get? Because that's creativity, isn't it? Yeah, you know, that is true, you know. And uh, I sort of sometimes worry about that because I come in there and you can get unlucky and they're sort of just listening to everything you say and everything's good. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I normally say, okay, let's get this straight. You know, I really need your feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, if I do a rubbish vocal, tell me, mm -hmm. and I'll ignore you. <laughs> but no, you know, it, it's, actually, it's actually very good. We can, that's one of the first things we do, is try and sort of put everyone at ease. So we just realize what the truth is, which is just we're a bunch of people in the studio trying to make a record. And what is the best advice that you've ever received about, about creativity? It was from Shakespeare, actually. No, really, I mean, uh, to thine own self be true. Uh, you know, he said it a long time ago, but it's still true. Um, I think you've got, to, you've got to follow your own instincts. What is difficult is that it's very easy to get caught up in this idea that you must just please everyone. Um, and, you know, that, that's easily done. But you've got to remind yourself that you've got to like it because um, then there's a chance that they might like it as well. But you've got to like it yourself, first of all. And I have a couple more questions, because you can imagine these have been being sent in by everybody thick and fast. I've got one on a letter that was then followed up with a series of tweets. And this guy's not going to leave me alone unless I ask. Uh, Steve Gooder, who I believe is, is here today somewhere, uh, was asking us. He said, 12 years ago, Sir Paul was interviewed on Mark and Lard's Radio 1 show. And uh, they managed to question him. Uh, was it true that John, George and you took the bus to the other side of Liverpool just to learn a new chord from a guy? Uh, he said it was true, you said it was true, and the chord was B minor seventh, I think, but they didn't ask the obvious follow-up question, which is, what was the first song they wrote with the new chord? Mm. Do you know? Good question, Steve. <laughs> um, yeah, it is almost true, but the chord's a bit wrong. Oh, it was, no, it wasn't B minor seven, it was just B seven, because uh. we knew E, and we knew A, Oh, we didn't know B7. Oh. And we needed that. We needed that to complete the sequence. And there was, yeah, there was a guy, a legendary guy who was across Liverpool. He got on the bus, went over there. Are you the man who knows B7? <laughs> I said, yes. I said, well, teach it us. And we did. He, he did teach it us. And, uh, yeah, we wrote one after 909 oh. very early. Oh. Well, that was worth the, the sort of 12 year wait for that uh, question and I've got another <laughs> final lovely one uh, which is from Matt and Louise in Stroud and they say Lauren please could you ask Macca the following me and my good lady are due to have a baby next April and I keep thinking of Beatle related names for our little one at the moment Martha or Prudence atop of my list but do you fancy picking the name of a Beatles track so I can say our baby was named by you <laughs> oh dear oh dear I, of course, you've got me. I'm thinking of nice, weird ones. <laughs> and what's your baby You've got name? to go to school in Stroud. Bear that in mind, Paul. That's okay. And what's your name, son? Kite. <laughs> Actually, not bad. Not bad. Think of it. Kite. What's the surname? Doesn't Kite of Stroud. <laughs> I rather like that. The Stroud um, Kites. Okay, well, if it's a girl, Valerie. Valerie. From the gallery. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And I think I'd better give up then. <laughs> But you do, you do know, I, I was talking to James Corden a few years ago before he had his baby, and he, they were looking for names, and I said, There's this, there is this lady in America whose name is something like 
or, or their names, Mr. and Mrs. Walker, they had a baby and they called the baby McCartney. You know, like using the surname as a, as a Christian name. So I jokingly, I said, that would be great, you name your baby. And I do believe he did it. <laughs> so I think his baby is, uh, you know, Rose McCartney Corden, wow. or something like that. But um, so there's another suggestion. Thank you very much. That is in the mix. Thank you, Paul. I'm going to get off your stool now. <laughs> Let you get back to it. Paul McCartney, everybody. <laughs>